Grüezi you YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. Another new mailbag, this time quite big packages. We will see what's inside. But let's start first with these small, already unpackaged devices. They are CJMCU226 and you see here they have quite a big shunt resistor so they should measure current one could assume and they have SCL and SDA so they are I2C devices. So let's see this small chip is an INA226 from Texas Instruments and it is a current shunt and power monitor. And the interesting thing is you can, you can make, you can measure on the low side or on the high side, you can measure current and you can also measure voltage. So if you, de if you multiply the two, you also have the power. And you have SDA SCL, which is a I2C device, a very neat chip for my solar project. The next one is even smaller. It is an incredible small chip. You hardly can see it, but it is a MCP. 73831 and it is a LiPo charger management controller and it charges LiPo batteries and I might also use this for my tests with solar panels. And the third one is a dedicated chip for solar panels and LiPo charging and it is called CN3063. It is for lithium ion batteries and for solar powered systems. I hope this is a good choice for my solar powered project. The next one is similar to this one. It also has some shunt resistors on it. But it has not only one shunt resistor, it has three shunt resistors. So this is a three channel current sensor and has also I squared C with the SCL and the SDA and it can also measure power which means it can also measure the bus voltage. So very similar device. This is uh, far more expensive than this one um, but it's a little bit more versatile. I will see which one I will use later on. For this one I don't need my knife because it's already open and it has plenty of these small boxes. Very nice with automatic opening. It has some springs here quite nice and you will immediately see why I bought these ones. This is the plan. I have plenty of resistors and was searching for a solution and now I have the solution but it is not, I did not have enough so I had to reorder a few more. You see here is the E I think 24 row with all the different resistors in it. It's quite convenient. You find them immediately, you can take one out and the rest stays here. At the end I will have three of these and I will have 130 different values I think in these boxes and they are quite nice to stack. So it's on a small, on a small, in a small space. They came all like this, labeled but not very convenient. You never find one 
uh, if you search for one. So I'm glad that I have now a better system than uh, this one before. Next one. This was one of the best packaged goods here. <laughs> Incredible. It is a power supply. It has 48 volt and 10.5 ampere. And it is for my power bench power supply project and also because I do not have one high voltage power source here in the lab which has a decent amperage, so this will be my strongest power supply, I think. So far I only had 12 volt, 10 ampere and so on. Next one. Plenty of different things. A few LEDs. I'm not sure if they are really good, because I use these LEDs for my YouTube videos, but uh, they did not survive too long uh, for the moment, so I had to buy a few news and maybe they have, have a better quality, I'm not sure. They are not very expensive, but um, also usually they do not uh, survive more than a few months. Next, just some silicon wires. I did not have a 20 and 18 the AWG, so I had to order a few of those. And now something uh, quite interesting. These are tapes for my brother printer and I use it for many things in the lab. As you saw before, all these labels are made from these tapes. They are very versatile and I use quite a lot of them. These are knockoffs and they are probably five times cheaper than the originals, but not the same quality as the originals, but good enough for me. And here, this is for my helper in my lab. He is a young guy and uh, he is working on a retro console with a Raspberry Pi and he wants to have a possibility to lock it that not everybody can use it because you will maybe see later on that he will also try to charge some money with his RetroPie console. We will see. But this is just a very low quality but at least symbolic you can lock this console. Next one Now this is something very expensive. It is also an LED, like this one here. But this is an original, or should be an original Cree. And this is nearly $50. And this one is probably $5 or less. So I'm really fed up a little with, with these LEDs because they, they always start to blink after a month or two. So I decided to go for a original. And now the battery of my wireless micro was flat. Unfortunately, I only discovered it after I finished unpackaging. So I have to step in with a voiceover, which is nothing special because most performers these days sing with a playback music. By the way, if you hear shooting in the background, Exactly 726 years ago, on August 1st, 1291, Switzerland was founded. At least if we believe the historians. And this is what we celebrate each year. But let's continue with the Cree LED. It is a XCB3590 rated at about 80 watts, a color temperature of 5000 Kelvin, and a CRI of 80. CRI 
or color rendering index is a measure of how accurately a light source illuminates objects through colors. It can go up to 100, which means that all colors of the spectrum are radiated evenly. Unfortunately, the price of the LEDs increase considerably with increasing CRI, as we see here for a 95 CRI LED. Shipping cost of $25 is still excluded. The next one is also intended for the retro console. It is an advanced coin counter. You get these counters in six different versions. The only difference between the versions is how many coins they can separate. The 923 model can distinguish between three and the 928 model between eight different coins. In Switzerland we have seven different coins. We decided not to use the 5 cents and the 5 francs coin because you cannot buy a lot for 5 cents anymore and 5 francs are too much for a fun game. By the way, if we have a closer look at these coins, we see that the 20 cents piece is 115 years old and the 10 cents one 109 years. Also, the 5 franc coin is already 40 years old. Now you probably understand the wealth of the Swiss. We keep all our money and do not spend it. The only exception is, of course, electronics. Back to the mailbag. The coin counter runs on 12 volts and has to be trained with real coins. The bigger models can also be used to separate less than the maximum amount of coins. Once trained, it works very well. And the principle is very simple. During setup, you define how many pulses each coin emits. We decided for one pulse for each 10 cents. And to learn Arduino programming, my young colleague programmed a small sketch to count the pulses. The next one comes also from Banggood and I bought it out of curiosity. It is very well packaged like a Russian babushka with several layers. I have to pay attention not to destroy it. At the first glance you see some old through-hole components and a glass tube on one side. You see also the radiation sign printed on the PCB. You guess what it is? Yes, it is a Geiger counter. Some of you might remember that every Swiss house has an atomic shelter. So, out of nostalgia, I thought I want to have such a counter to experiment with. The Geiger tube seems to be a Chinese J305, which is still produced. I will have a closer look at this device in another video. And for those who are skeptical about the atomic shelters here, I take you for a quick tour to our shelter below our houses. Because I live in a community, we have a common shelter for all of us. As you see, it is buried deep into the earth and has massive doors, which can be closed and are absolutely tight. Communication is not very modern, but it works also without electricity, just by moving the dial manually. Here you see the kitchen, fortunately never used, and here the bathroom. I do not exactly know how they want to solve the gender problem, maybe with a time division protocol. Watch also the mirrors. Even in such situations, we want to be perfectly shaved and good looking. But of course, only with one cold water faucet or tap. Here we see our beds, also unused. And because the outside air would be polluted, we have big filters, also manually operated. And around the corner, even more of them. And here we have a small emergency exit to a hidden place. 
This could be used if the main entrance would be blocked. So you see, I did not exaggerate. Back to 2017. The next one is a device which can be connected between the line and the telephone set. Because my 92 year old father is nearly deaf, I will try this one. Because it should flash if somebody calls him. I am not convinced if this will work with our modern signaling here. But the price was worth the experiment. Maybe somebody has tried it already? Next are banana plugs. Because I used all black and red ones for my many solar panels, I had to restock. These here are a decent quality and definitely worth the money. Even if they do not shine golden. The last one is the case for the DPS5005 power supply. As you saw in a former video, I already own the power supply itself. This box has a good quality. It is completely out of aluminium, including the nicely milled front and back. It comes with a fan and a 5 volt power supply to power it. At the end, I am sure it will look very good. And together with a 48 volt power supply of the beginning of the video, I will have a 50 volt 5 ampere bench top power supply. But this case is not for this particular power supply. I have other plans with it. Stay tuned. I hope this little special mailbag was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.